Well, good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office on this Thursday morning. It is now the first day of August, the 2024. This is the morning briefing coming to you from the Home Weather Office. And as I look out the window, there's some high clouds out there. There's also a little bit of smoke. A little bit of uh, bookkeeping here first. Yes, July it became official yesterday, the hottest month at downtown Sacramento has ever seen. And it wasn't just by a couple of tenths of a degree, as it usually is when you set one of those new records. It was by a full two degrees. So it was uh, a very, very warm month with 21 days at or above 100 degrees. The average high temperature for Sacramento was over 100 degrees for the first time. It's actually over 101 uh, for the first time ever. So yeah, I, I know that many of you have gotten your electric bills. I just got my PG&E bill yesterday and highest it's ever been. So yeah, let's hope for better things as we head into the month of August. A couple of things to talk about today. We've got the park fire, of course, we're going to talk about. We're also going to talk about how the weather may impact that over the next couple of days with a surge of monsoon moisture and the chance of thunderstorms. So let's get into that. A lot of things going on here this morning on the satellite. We have marine layer, we have some high clouds, and we have some smoke. Let me illustrate that a little bit better for you here. I can uh, draw on this a little bit so maybe you can see exactly what's going on here. All right, so we have these high thin clouds. You see them moving up in this direction here. But then farther to the south, there's the monsoon moisture. I uh, didn't mean to do that. Um, there's the monsoon moisture down to the south. Let me refresh all of this. That is going to be coming up our way from the south and southwest. That is actually going to be increasing over the next couple of days. More moisture and the chance of afternoon thunderstorms. And of course, we also have the smoke. The one thing we did not see on the fire yesterday was much in the way of growth on the fire. And that's really good news. It grew by a few thousand acres. And yeah, I mean, a few thousand acres is still a few thousand acres. But this is the latest footprint of the fire. And what we've been seeing over the last couple of days is really no growth here on the west side, no growth here on the south side toward Chico. And then this has been Highway 32 that they've been able to hold quite successfully. So where the fire has been burning is in this area, north of Highway 32 and south of Highway 36. And this is an area basically of forest land and pretty steep terrain down here, especially in Mill Creek and Deer Creek down in here. And this is likely where we'll continue to see the fire grow over the next couple of days. Now, whether or not it's just kind of a, a creeping fire that just kind of continues to advance um, by a little bit every day, or if it turns into another day or two when we see you know, 20,000 acres burn in a day remains to be seen, but it's also going to have a lot to do with the weather that we see over the next couple of days. So let's talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to start with the NAM here. And I mentioned on the satellite that we have a lot of the cloud cover down here to the south, and that's the moisture. This is the precipitable water. And as we get into the day Friday, you can see how that comes up from the south. And so we start to see more cloud cover on Friday. And so while today, with mostly sunny skies, temperatures will top 100 degrees, maybe for Sacramento, like 102, 103, on Friday, it's likely going to feel a little humid, but the daytime highs will be cooler, maybe something like 95 to 98 for Sacramento, something like that. But with that will come the chance of showers or thunderstorms for some areas that I'll show you in a second. And then once we get into the day Saturday, all of that will be clearing out and temperatures will once again bounce back up. All right, so let's go to the HRRR. And what I'm going to show you here is what the radar may see, as opposed to, it doesn't mean this is going to be raining here, but this is Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock. You have what we would call elevated convection here, perhaps over Highway 50, Highway 88. Certainly mostly cloudy skies, and there could be some verga coming out of this. But as these go by, even if you don't get any rain down to the surface, these can impact surface winds that I'll show you here in a second. And then as you can see, it advances to the north. And then overnight and early Saturday morning, we have more of that into the areas that are being impacted. This is actually the overnight hours going into um, Saturday morning. This is like 3 o'clock in the morning we have the possibility of elevated convection and perhaps even some lightning. Actually, let me show you that too, with the lightning. There is a lightning product here on the HRRR that I just need to get the menu for. Um, 
This isn't indicating a lot of lightning, but it's showing some. And so what you see here are the density of lightning. And while it's <laughs> way down here close to zero on the scale, it isn't zero. This is zero. This is, you know, somewhat more than zero. Um, but this indicates that there could be lightning. And if there's no rain, there'll be dry lightning. So this is Friday afternoon. And then this is that overnight, two, three, four o'clock in the morning on Saturday, affecting Plumas County and areas around Tehama County, Butte County, where the fire is currently burning. So whether or not we get any precipitation out of that remains to be seen. Um, let me just look at the total precip accumulation. As you can see, there's virtually none here. And even in the areas where this model says there is going to be some rain, it's a couple of one hundredths. So even though we're going to have this really good precipitable water come our way, it doesn't look as though we're going to see beneficial rain out of this, um, which is pretty typical for, uh, for the monsoon. Sometimes we get some good dumping rains, but this doesn't look like it's going to be kind of the miracle that we had a couple of years ago with the mosquito fire where we saw really nice beneficial rain. All right, so let's talk about the wind a little bit because this is going to get really interesting. This is this afternoon. We're going to have light to moderate winds in the areas where the fire is burning, which means that you're likely going to see the fire creep again today. You don't see the fire really taking off today, but we'll likely see the fire just kind of creep along. Get into Friday morning and the winds are once again light, light onshore wind here. But a couple of interesting things happen on Friday afternoon, at least according to this model. All right, this is 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to pay attention to this area, El Dorado County, Amador County, Calaveras County. And I know it might be kind of tough to tell, but these wind errors are coming this way. So it's a, a west, southwest wind, that sort of thing. Now watch what happens as this model picks up on a thunderstorm coming by. This is five o'clock in the afternoon. This is a downslope wind and it's a pretty strong one too. So what this model is trying to indicate is that maybe somewhere up here, uh, up toward Kirkwood, let's say, that there is a thunderstorm. You could see an outflow boundary come down the hill from that. We saw that actually with the Mosquito Fire a couple of years ago when the Mosquito Fire just started. We saw the outflow, a uh, really strong outflow, that really flared that fire from the canyon up the hill, up toward Forest Hill. Not saying that that's going to happen here because there's no existing fire here at this point, but it's this is really interesting. All right, so now let's go up to the area where the fire is is burning up in here. And at this point, at five o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, we have strong southwesterly winds on the east side. But then as that elevated convection comes our way, this is um, a late, late Friday night, downslope winds which means that areas like Red Bluff and Chico will likely see a lot of smoke on, on uh, Saturday morning. And then during the overnight, let's see, I think it's this one here. Yeah, during the overnight, we have more of that downslope wind. So there's some convection up here and we have downslope wind impact the areas around the fire. That can make the fire act rather erratically. And then we get into the day on Saturday and the winds turn back to that normal direction. There is also going to be a, um, a better chance of having the winds aloft change during the day on Monday. So the pattern will change again once, that, uh, once all of this goes by, this monsoon moisture goes by on Friday, Saturday. Once that goes by on, on Monday, it looks as though those 10,000 foot winds could once again increase and that helps to vent the fire, helps it to breathe a little bit more. So I think the next couple of days will be beneficial for firefighters, especially today, allowing them to um, fight with whatever tactics they're using to try to slow it down in that forest area there or build any more um, dozer lines and that sort of thing to try to help slow the fire down in, in the direction it's heading. And They'll see this weather forecast uh, for that the, the winds to increase again during the day on Monday. Not so much down at the surface, but certainly aloft. And again, that helps the fire to breathe. And so if the fire is still going on Monday at a pretty good clip and it's really hot on Monday, we could see you know those pyrocumulus sort of things, again, indicating a hot advancing 
fire. So that's what's ahead for the next couple of days on the fire, as well as for the valley. The valley, as I said today, temperatures over 100. For Sacramento, something like maybe 102, 103. A little bit cooler because of the cloud cover Friday, but over the weekend, temperatures will be back over 100 degrees again. Nothing too excessive, but certainly in that 103, 104 range, perhaps on both Saturday and Sunday afternoon. So yes, it's a new month, but the heat does continue. That's everything I've got for you this morning. Make it a great day. I'll talk with you later.